So we, we hung on. And it came to that 14th night. We have been blown across the Adriatic Sea. We were just driven across by the wind. And, and finally, the sailors began to sense that land was ahead. It was midnight, but they had the sense that land, that land was ahead. And you kind of think, like, why midnight, God? You know, why, why like, do we sense land at midnight? You know what I mean? Like, why when it's completely dark do we think the land is coming? You know, why not wait for daylight? You know what I mean? But, but we just sent, the, the, the sailors sensed that, 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 that land was, was, was coming up. They, they just kind of, they, they, they knew that. And this is what the sailors did. They, they kind of cracked me up, especially after what, what I had told them. What, what they do, though, is they, they take this lifeboat. We had a lifeboat on, on our ship, and all the sailors began to get together because they knew we were going we we to hit land pretty soon. They were certainly fearful that we were going to completely destroy the ship, and they were, everyone was going to be lost. So they get the, they get the, you know, the, 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 the lifeboat, and, and they start, like, rolling it down because they want to be saved, you know? And, and we see them, Julius the Centurion and the soldiers, were, were watching them do it. And I told Julius, I'm like, look, dude, you lose the sailors, you're all going to die. Like, you don't want to do that. And so the soldiers very quickly came alongside and said, sailors, you ain't doing that. And so the soldiers actually cut the lifeboat off the boat. Think about that. Now, what are we left with? Nothing. No lifeboat. Don't we want to hold on to those secure, you know, we want to hold on to every last bit of hope that we can hold on to. And yet, and yet God takes us through this journey where he just says, cut the lifeboat, man. I'm your lifeboat. I'm the only way that you're going to get from here to that island. I'm it. I've told you you're going to be safe. I told you you're going to live. Why won't you trust just trust me. One more day. It's hard to trust, isn't it? And it's especially hard to trust when you don't know the awesome God that we have. And maybe you're here this morning and you're looking for that lifeboat and, and you don't have a, you, you don't have, you haven't put your faith in Jesus yet and you're looking for that lifeboat. Let me tell you something. The only lifeboat that will truly get you safe is Jesus Christ himself. So we finally reach land and, and we're, all, we're all safe and along the way the soldiers wanted to kill me and all the prisoners and Julius once again came and saved the day and didn't have me killed and so we got to the, got to the island and and uh, we were there safe, and <laughs> I mean, this is just such a God thing. I, I don't know about you, but this happens in life all the time. So we're finally safe from the shipwreck, right? So you're like, sweet, we're safe. The islanders are so kind to us. It was, it was weird, like weird kind. We had no idea what island we were on. Finally, we figured out from the people on the island that we were on the island of Malta, which uh, if you have the map up there, you can see it. If you can get to the map, John, at the end, maybe. So you can see where, where we ended up. We're over here. See that little thing? This is so significant for you to see. You see all these big lands? Okay? We were supposed to go here. We ended up here on a very little island. Let me make this point before I forget. God loves everyone. He doesn't just love the big guys. He, he doesn't just love the kings and the queens. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't just love... He, he, he loves the people on Malta. He wanted, he wanted them to know the gospel. One day, all nations will worship our God. Don't ever forget that. So we ended up on this island of, of Malta. The islanders were really good, and they, they actually started building a fire and and I'm just naturally a guy who likes to work, so I went out and gathered some wood and brought some wood into the fire, throw the wood on the fire, and because of the heat, this snake, this viper, anybody like snakes? I hate, well, so a snake comes out and, and boom, launches onto my hand, and it's just hanging there. 
I mean, what would you be thinking? All the islanders were thinking this. Dude, that guy's cursed. I mean, he survives a shipwreck and then gets bit by a snake. What is up with that? What are the chances of that happening? This guy must be a murderer, is what the islanders said. He must be a murderer. I mean, God's just, the gods are just being just. But after I get away from me, nothing happened. My, my hand didn't swell up. They thought for surely I would die. They, they, they thought I would die almost instantly. And, and, and when I didn't die, guess what happened? Their perceptions radically changed. Now I wasn't a murderer. Now I was a, a god to them. How quickly people's perceptions change. Right? But I want us to think about this. Because a lot of times we, we think this way because we think so logically. We think as the islanders would think. We think, God, why would you save me from a shipwreck only to lead me to a snake bite? Right? I mean, God, why, why would... Why would, you, why would you heal me from this and yet take me down here? Why, why, would, why, would, why, why, why would you provide this? Why would you save me from this thing? Why, why would you help me overcome this struggle of sin? Why would you help me get through this period of time only for another? And what I am learning is that God uses shipwrecks and snake bites for his purpose. He uses it all for his purpose. He uses your shipwreck that you're experiencing right now for his purpose. He's going to use it. Be encouraged. Be encouraged, even in the, in the nightmare, possibly, that you're living in now. See, as God uses snake bites and shipwrecks for his purpose. Let, let, me, let, let, me, let, me tell you what, let me tell you what happened. Because I didn't die from the snake bite, they thought I was a god. And this, the chief official of the island named Publius wanted to see me. He was the chief. He was the man. He was the, literally the first man of the island. And because of all that I had gone through, I went to go and see him. And he entertained us for three days. And it was sweet. I mean, talking about, I mean, he fed us. He entertained us. I mean, we, we did it up. We did it up with the chief. You know what I'm saying? It was awesome. It was awesome. And, uh, and yet, after about three days... Uh, I found out that his father was very, very sick. He had a, a stomach sickness and, and dysentery, and then it was a mess. I mean, just imagine what it would be like to be sick with that and that kind of intestinal disease and all the struggles with all that stuff. And, and what a nightmare, you know, what it, it, what it would be to live with, within all that and, and that dynamic. And so I went in to where his father was. I laid my hands on him and I prayed over him, and he was healed. He was healed. And, and after that, God just used that, and people from all over the island began to come with all their sicknesses and diseases, and, and God just began to use me to heal each, each and every one. See, God uses the snake bites and shipwrecks for his purpose. He loves the people of Malta. So he says, you're not going to Rome yet, Paul. You're not going there yet. I'm going to send you to this little island way off the coast so that these people can see my power. So that they can know that there's a God who loves them. That they can know that this God is here to save them. God uses your shipwrecks and your snake bites for his purpose. See, we had no 